This week we're talking about ventilation, which is an extremely important part of a well-designed cruising boat. This week we're going to be building door aid boxes. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. A door aid box is used on deck to provide ventilation into the cabin without letting water in. It is a very simple design which got its name from first being fitted onto a Sparkman and Stevens yawl called door aid. It works by a big cowl that fits onto the top of a box that catches wind coming over the deck. The air is shoved through the box over a baffle and down a tube that is proud of the deck and fed into the cabin. The box has drains around the perimeter for water to escape and both the cow and the inflow tube can be sealed in very rough or cold weather to seal the deck. The point is to shove a lot of air into the boat without letting in any water in most conditions. Ventilation keeps the boat cooler on hot days, especially at sea when it is imprudent to open deck hatches. More importantly, ventilation keeps the air moving in the cabin to prevent mold from taking hold. The ventilation system needs to be well designed so air can move easily throughout the entire boat. My solution for now is for four door aids in two boxes on either side of the mast. The boxes are extra long to integrate a small locker in the middle for bits, bobs, and tools necessary at the mast. They will also integrate a mast or butt rail, which contains a person at the mast and protects the door aids from sheets and other lines. I've got the basic design drawn up on my CAD for how the boxes are gonna look. Where they're gonna go is on either side of the mast. And that's because if you saw on the CAD, there's a, uh, what I call a butt rail, mast rail that is integrated into the box. And so that when you're standing at the mast, you can be contained by those butt rails. So having the dory boxes on either side of the mast is going to ventilate both the head and everything from basically the head aft. So I was really on the fence about making an actual three, an actual a mock-up. So I didn't do a 3D one. I basically just laid out where the cowls and the vents are going to go so I could figure out where in the boat the vents are going to go through in relation to the mast, how they are fore and aft, if they're parallel to the center line or off center or kind of angled to the center line. I also needed to make sure that the, the box is going to fit with where the dinghy is going to go. So this has been really helpful just to figure out where everything goes in relation to everything else. So uh, as you can see, the big circles here are for the cowls. These smaller ones are the vents that go through the boat. And I'm going to make it so that they're angled to the center line. They're following this line, which is the kind of the, I guess you call it the cabin top, the end of the cabin top. So it's gonna follow that line be parallel to it. And that also makes it so that the cowls themselves, if the boat, if we're at anchor for instance, and the wind is directly on the bow, which is where we'll be most of the time, you know, that's, that's where the boat will be 90% of the time. The cowls are not right in front of each other. If the wind's right in my face, I don't want one cowl right in front of the other. I want, want them offset from each other. And so that's the advantage of making it angled to the center line of the boat. So now that I'm happy with where the box is going to go, I can go down to the shop and start building the box, starting with making a new sheet of flat stock. After the flat stock had cured overnight, I cut it into the pieces that will make up the door aid. got all my parts cut out for the first door aid to go together so I'm just going to glue it together with my fast cure thick sew from Total Boat and then I might glass the inside of it together and then tomorrow we'll take it up to the boat and fit it to the boat.
there will be a locker in the center of each of these where we'll keep bits and bobs that we keep at the mast, like winch handles and stuff. And so this is just the lid that will be the top of the locker. After I glued the pieces together, I taped the inside edges with a tape of six ounce cloth. Fit these to the boat. The next step is getting this thing level. I don't know how necessary it is to have these things level, but I prefer to have it level to the water so that. When you're looking down the boat, you just see the, the cowls aren't kind of off at an angle, just looking a little awkward. I'd like them to be perfectly per standing straight up. It also makes it, when I put the butt rail on here, the butt rail is going to be like a big staple. It'll be shaped like a big staple that comes up. You know, I want the rail to be perpendicular to the water so that installing it will be a lot easier when everything is perpendicular and square. So. I'm gonna make these things level, and all I'm using is a bunch of blocks, my levels. So I have this digital level, and then I have my straight edge, and they'll, it'll come up something like this. And what I'll do, once the it is blocked up, I'll mark it all the way around and cut it off on the bottom so that when you set it on the deck, it makes contact all the way around the deck, and but the top remains level. All right, so give me an hour to get both Dory boxes leveled out. Okay, I'll go check on my mom and Alder and make us lunch. Okay. These two boxes are level with the earth. They are symmetrical about the center line. And the next thing to do is to sink them down to be flush with the deck as far as the bottom of the of the box is flush with the deck. As you can see, this corner is the highest, the furthest away from the deck. So all I'm gonna do is measure from that corner down to the deck. I'm just gonna follow the, this edge and I'll do that at all four corners. So it's two and 15 sixteenths from the deck. And so I'm just gonna measure two and 15 sixteenths at every corner all the way around. And then I'll connect those corners by a line all the way around and cut along that line. And then when I bring them back up, it should be really close to just sitting perfectly on the deck. This deck is curved and I'm just gonna be drawing straight lines so it won't be exact, but it'll be really close. All right, now I can cut it. Then it was time to add mini bulkheads and baffles inside the Dorade boxes. These are dividing the area into sealed and unsealed sections, delineating where water can't move and air can. All right, I've got all these little bulkheads ready to glue in into my, this is the second uh, Dorade box.
this is a finished one uh, as far as getting the bulkheads in. The next thing to do are the stanchion bases. So those will be glued in. That's what these two bulkheads are for. So they'll be stanchion bases glued in there. I used my hole saw to drill two holes where the stanchion bases will go, one on each side of the box. Alright, so I have all these bulkheads glued into the Doré box. And again, this Doré box is going to serve a few functions. It's going to be ventilation with the two Dorades per box. It's also going to have this locker that's in the middle of it that you access from the top. And third, it's going to hold the, what I'm calling the butt rail, which is a great place when you're standing at the mast, it, you put your butt against it when you're pulling halyards or using the winch. And it just is a nice safe place that you have, you know, basically three points of contact with the boat and it's a lot more stable to have something to lean against. So I'm integrating the stanchion bases that the butt rail will bolt to into the dorade box. And just like the stanchion bases that we're putting in the deck around the boat, I'm using these pultruded fiberglass rods. But in the difference here is that I'm making my own sockets. And so this is just a big sleeve that I glued onto it. It's just, this is called phenolic. It's an even cheaper uh, resin and paper composite I'm just using this as the base and I'm going to glue it into the dory here. There's a bulkhead that it's going to glue to so it's be, it'll be super strong in there. And to make sure that it is very square to the top of the dory, I have this block and I just set the rod into the block and I'll hot glue that block to the dorade and that will make sure that the rod is square to the top of the dorade. These blocks are temporary. I'll be taking those off as soon as the glue cures. They're just a placeholder to make sure that the rod is square. Now I'm just gonna shove a whole bunch of glue down there to secure everything together. These stanchion bases are glued in on, this is the starboard side dory box. The next step is to drill the holes in the top of the box for the cowls where they're going to go. And that's so that I can position it perfectly on the deck where the inflow tubes which come through the deck into the, um, the opposite side of the dory box. So they'll be, this is the aft end, 
the cowl always goes on the aft end of the dory box. That, that's because then the water has to do a 180 degree turn in order to make it into the boat. So it's more difficult for the water to get into the boat that way. So the cowl goes on the aft end, the vent, the inflow tube goes under the forward side. So once I get this cowl hole drilled, then I can position this uh, box perfectly right where I want the uh, inflow tubes to go. This is right where I'd like it. I drilled the holes in the top for the cowls to be four inches for now. I hope to get cowls big enough that the holes will be five inch openings. You know, the more air we can get, the better. Especially stainless cowls are super expensive. The size of the hole will depend on what we can afford as far as the cowls go. We might end up getting plastic ones too, which isn't a bad thing. The next thing to do is to, I would like to drill the holes through the deck and get the uh, inflow tubes in the right place. So on the port side of the boat, there's not really anything underneath where the inflow tubes are gonna go, except for there's a deck beam that goes right up to the mast partners right here. So it's uh, perpendicular to the center line of the boat. So I can't put the, deck, the inflow tube on that deck beam because it's a structural part of the boat. So it has to go fore and aft of that deck beam. This aft inflow tube is gonna go into the shower area and there's only about a nine inch space from the deck beam to the aft end of the shower that this tube can go kind of i'm going to be lining this up and make sure making sure it goes in exactly the right place but i think this is where i want it to be so i've spent far too much time trying to figure this problem out this is the fitting it's a pvc adapter that for a slip fit on one side, female threaded on the other side. I want the female threads down inside the boat. So this is the inflow tube where air will be flowing into the boat. It's a four inch PVC. And I want this threaded side down so that I can put a plug, just a normal PVC plug into the adapter in case, you know, we're in some rough weather. I don't want to have these really fancy like stainless parts that I have to buy. So it's just a cheap solution to having, um, to closing the inside. Anyway, I also want these to be perpendicular to the earth, square to the earth, rather than being at an angle to the, or being square to the deck. And so I made this fairing block, which is my guide for cutting out the holes uh, that these PVC parts will fit into. So anyway, I finally got it figured out. I think it's gonna work pretty well to get all these holes cut using this method. So I've got one of them cut out, so I'm gonna cut the rest, the other three holes out through the deck, and then I can start thinking about gluing these door aid boxes down. After cutting the holes for the inflow pipes, I sanded through the paint down to fiberglass in preparation for bonding the boxes to the deck.
next week we're going to be installing these Dorade boxes. I'm excited because they're really going to transform the look of the deck and the boat from a profile perspective. And of course, we'll have to arrange an inspection. We have a new Patreon to thank this week. We'd like to thank Eric, who's out of the Chesapeake Bay. He's been sailing this Moody, uh, I think 34, out of the Chesapeake Bay for 25 years. He said he has all kinds of boats in his stable and is planning on building a dory here in the near future. And uh, this picture he took is from him on his way to go see uh, Steve on Arabella launch their boat. So thank you very much to Eric. And of course, thank you to everybody that's been supporting our channel. Uh, from the Patreons to subscri subscribers and watchers and everybody else who's helping. We really, really could not do this project without you.